Okay, welcome back. Today we have Sandor's owner joining us today, so we have a special day today. Sandor, um, you, as you guys have been following, you guys know him as the giant baby. So here's Sandor's owner, all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I'll, I'll let her introduce herself here. Hi, my name's Macy. Um, as Steve said, I live in Nashville. I moved there fairly recently. I moved around a couple of times in the last couple of years, so finally I'm stable in my location and ready to bring down him. Um, bought him about a year ago, and he had just been living in a pasture with a couple other yearlings, so really needed to get some spatial awareness, as I'm sure you've seen if you've been following along at all. And really, um, I'm alone in Nashville, so wanted to get him into a, a better mindset, safer mindset for me when I'm working with him going forward. And he's only two, so obviously have a lot more time before we're ready to take next steps in riding, but really excited that he's been getting such great basic uh, groundwork and manners with Steve. All right, thanks, Macy. Let's get started. What we're gonna plan on doing today is his first trailer loading session. We got him on the trailer to get him over here. It wasn't necessarily the prettiest thing, so he doesn't really know how to get on the trailer. So today will be day one. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. First, I'm gonna warm him up. I'm not gonna go straight to the trailer. So we've been spending all this, these past three weeks or so just building a language between he and I. So I want to make sure he's mentally prepared, mentally ready to learn something new. So describe this. We talked about this in one of my previous videos with this horse, but I want to, we'll talk about it again. I want to warm him up with an exercise that I call connection circles. And on the start, I don't expect him to connect with me. The idea here is I want him to take in his whole environment, all of his surroundings. I want him to be able to look around. I want him to be able to move his feet. I want him to be able to really just be out here and be a horse. Because in a few minutes, I'm gonna expect him to really tune in and focus on me and focus on what I have to, to say to him. But that'd be too much to expect for a really any any young green horse without allowing them to take in their environment and be able to feel safe now this exercise there's not a lot of structure to it i just sent him out i'm not lunging him or circling him as you can see i just sent him out and said go go trot around a little bit that's all there is i'm not ex i'm not talking to his feet I'm not talking to his brain it's very unstructured he's allowed to slow down if he wants he can speed up now again he's never allowed to run away i've been saying that from the first session he's never allowed to run away <clears throat> so if he were to run away i'd use my one rein stop to slow him down he's so funny he just kicked himself in the chin did you see that macy <laughs> that's funny my my two-year-old does this too she'll put her nose down way down in the sand like that Yeah, now, I wouldn't do this with a horse too soon in their development. This horse has already learned that he can't pull on me and he can't run away. So if your horse hasn't learned that, if they're still real heavy on your rope, if they hit the end of that halter and keep pulling, I wouldn't recommend doing this exercise. I'd recommend putting those pieces in that you saw in his first sessions so that they learn not to run away. They learn that pulling on your hand is never an option. I'm going to go around the arena one more time, allow him to see everything out of his other eye. You can see he pulled on me just a little bit there, but I was able to hold on to him with just my fingers here. So he's not really pulling on me. And this is what you, I really want you guys have, you guys to have before you do this exercise. You want to see how I got here just go back and watch the previous videos if you haven't seen them already it really doesn't take that long if you're well if you're starting with a younger horse that 
hasn't learned bad habits if it doesn't take that long. <clears throat> All right, there you're starting to settle in just a little bit. You starting to look for me? Okay, that's why we call them connection circles. We'll do a few laps, a couple laps around the arena till he starts to offer to connect to me in the center here. So, all right, what are we gonna do? All right, I'm gonna test out. I'm gonna test out the first three essential yields, which is forward, forward off of my hand. Good. Do you guys see how I take a direct feel on that? I take a direct feel. I don't push them with the stick. My stick is for hurting pressure. The stick is for, we'll call it understanding pressure. Right? Horses do not naturally understand this direct pressure. They fight against it. So we use the stick to help them understand. So if he were to lean on my hand or not go with that direct feel, I'd use the stick to herd him forward. But then you take that stick away. You don't chase them. The stick is understanding pressure or hurting pressure. I had a question just the other day from a guy on the forward yield. I haven't answered it yet, but here's your answer. If they're not responsive to that forward pressure, push, but then put your stick away. Direct pressure, there you go. If they're not responsive, use hurting pressure or understanding pressure. All right, that's the forward yield. Hind quarter yield off the rein. Can he step his back end out? Can he step his front quarters through? And then can he go forward? That's one of the biggest keys to getting your turns light is it's, it's more psychological than physical. If they just turn them and stop them all the time and you turn and stop and you turn and stop, don't be surprised if your turns get heavy because your horse isn't thinking about going forward in the turn. Yeah, they're just thinking about stopping when you turn and stop, so your turns get heavy. But you see time and time again with these horses, I'll turn them and go, and they turn and they go, and they turn and they go, and then once in a while, once in a while, they'll turn and I'll do a one rein stop. Okay, so that seems to be working pretty well. I don't think he's ready to focus on the trailer yet. Okay, so we're gonna Add another yield here. This is the drifting yield. We'll add that to our hind quarters, to our front quarters, to our forward. We'll pick his nose up, redistribute his weight and balance to get him to drift, or it might look like a leg yield or a side pass, and send the front quarters through. Okay, we'll do that same thing coming back this way. There's the forward yield. I'll grab the rein. Redirect his weight, see if we can get him to cross his legs over. Hind quarter yield, front quarters. He's missed the forward, but that's okay. The reason we missed the forward is because the hind quarter, front quarter yield didn't work that time. There it worked. Now we can step forward. Now we can drift him. Now we can step the hind quarters and the front quarters through. And there's the forward. He's saying, oh, yikes, there's a scary trailer there. It's an opportunity for me to step in and say, if you guys remember those three ingredients, if they don't feel safe, provide them with leadership and responsibility, okay, so that they can seek comfort. If they don't feel safe, provide them with leadership and responsibility so they can seek comfort. So what I did there is he said, oh, no, scary trailer. I said, well, if you stay with me, if you stay on pattern, if you stay focused, I can keep you safe. So, yep, I see that trailer too. Let's stay focused. I'm not gonna focus on that trailer. That'd be, that could actually really work against me if I started focusing on that trailer. He goes, yikes, trailer. And if I go, yeah, trailer, let's focus on that. Okay, he'd be, he'd really be out focusing me. And 
psychologically that doesn't do much for my leadership okay so or my trust so I'm not going to focus on that trailer I'm going to focus on the pattern I'm going to focus on the language I'm going to focus on providing them with safety leadership and responsibility let's talk about the responsibility part within this exercise you can see he's doing a really good job of this first responsibility don't act like a prey animal okay he's not running away from me he's not running over the top of me don't act like a prey animal second piece if you notice <clears throat> if i'm not asking him to yield if i'm not picking up this rain he's staying right where i put him and that's that's responsibility number two stay where i put you I mean, if I put you at this speed, if I put you at walk at this tempo on this size of a circle, that's where I want you to stay until I ask you for a transition. A transition can be forward, backwards, or lateral. Okay? Lateral transition here, turn the hind quarters. Lateral transition here, turn the front quarters, go forward. I'm not going to ask for the drift, so I want them to just go forward. Okay? Stay where I put you. There's leaning a little bit, leaning on my hand, so I just close. That's my opportunity to say, stay where I put you. Take leadership. Let's say you didn't uphold your end of the responsibility. There he's got it. There he's got it. Okay, I'm going to pick up his nose, redistribute his weight for the drift. Hind quarters, front quarters. Front quarters didn't work that time, so we missed the forward. Okay. If you notice, he jumped there, and we're getting technical now. He jumped through there instead of stepping through. So we're gonna address that. Front quarter, cross. Good. Oops. It's a good thing I've taught him his responsibility so he didn't run away when I dropped the rope like that. You guys probably noticed in my videos I dropped the rope pretty often. I go, whoops, I'm pretty good at catching it. We got a lot of practice at that. I try to be light with my hands and just close them when I have to. Sometimes a quick little head jerk or something like that will cause me to drop my rope. That's my excuse. I'm actually really clumsy. But good boy. All right, let's step the hind quarters through. Hind quarters around, I mean, front quarters through. See what he thinks of the trailer. If we just accidentally bump into it. You've heard me mention before, horses build confidence in things uh, with, with all of their five senses. So they first like to, to smell whatever it is, and they can smell it from a long ways away. He can smell this trailer from the other side of the barn. But um, they like the first smell, and then they look, and then they listen. And right now you're seeing him touch. He's using touch. He's touching everything with his nose. It'd be great to see him touch it with his feet. A lot of times when I'm teaching a young horse to get on a trailer, they'll start tasting it. And that's the last one. Tasting is kind of your home run. If they can taste it, okay, that's, that's a big deal. So we've got, it's, it's going to make some noise too when he, when he steps in it. But so far we've got sight, sound, smell covered, touch. He hasn't tasted it yet. He's still curious about this. I'm just going to allow him to hang out. If you notice too, he's getting a really, he's getting a little vacation right here, right by the trailer. We did a lot of work without much of a break out there in the arena. Right now he's on vacation. Now being that I want to teach him to get on the trailer, I don't expect him to climb on it today. Okay, I get the opportunity to teach him to climb on, so it can be a good experience. If I had to get him on, if I were, if he had to go back home today and he hadn't been on a trailer, if I hadn't prepared him to go back home, well, we'd do what we had to do to get him on. And I want this to be a good experience. So we're gonna go back to work here. I'm gonna start on this. This is a great go-to pattern for a green horse. Just doing these, just doing these half circles, hind quarters front quarters, drift, hind quarters, front quarters, kind of, <laughs> drift, 
hind quarters, front quarters. All right there, you see me being pretty assertive about that one rain stop. He's trotting, but I didn't ask him to trot. I asked him to walk. So he is not upholding his end of the deal. Responsibility number two, stay where I put you. I didn't ask you to trot. We're walking. So I'll get assertive with that. Stop. Let's take him back around. What you're seeing him do is fall in and crowd a little bit. And especially on this side, especially on this side in his turns. So I'm going to get prepared to help him balance on his front end here a little bit more. Balance on the front and cross over. Balance on the front and cross over. There we go. Now step under. Now I'll bring the front quarters through. That was better. He was starting to get impulsive in those turns, not being very thoughtful about it. And I don't really want to encourage that. Saying, yeah, I know what to do, I know what to do, but you're not being thoughtful about it. Hind quarters through, reach, cross, forward, good. I understand that it's hard work, and that's kind of the idea too. I want the trailer to be vacation here. Cross over in the front, nope. cross over in the front, cross over in the front. Then step under, then sit on your hocks and bring your front end through. Good. Okay. We're gonna add a new piece to this. We're gonna go from the drift to a hind quarter roll to a backup. Good, to the other side. Forward, drift, hind quarter yield. A little block there if he tries going through to a backup. Other side. Good. I'm gonna send him the same direction this time. What I want you guys to notice is those those three those three of the five essential yields i'm asking for mostly the hind quarter four quarter and the forward those are those are tough to do when done well you guys can see him becoming physically tired but really to sit on his hocks like that to sit on his hocks takes a lot of strength okay so that's i'm really putting him to work here all right we didn't really try anything that time. We're gonna come back to work over here. And we're gonna add a little bit of energy and a little bit of trot to this. Send forward and trot. Good. Take the hind quarters away, send forward and trot. Good. Take the hind quarters away. And forward and trot. Now this whole this whole trailer is open, so he has room to turn around in here. That's done on purpose. You guys can feel he's pretty nervous. I'm just gonna give him the time. He's allowed to come out. Okay, we're just gonna give him a minute. But I want him to figure out that vacation is in here. Again, he's using his five senses in there. Smell, sight, and sound. Touch, I haven't seen him taste yet. Which is kind of surprising. He's always nipping it and chewing on everything. Has he always been like that, Macy? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You 
think, dude. He says, I'm starting to like it in here already. I'm just going to allow him to sit and chew and use his five senses. Allow him to become confident in here. Take a nice long vacation. As it gets better at this, we're going to start to make it a little bit harder. He's going to have to go in straight. He's going to have to stay straight. He's going to have to back out. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Actually teaching him to take that step. Mm -hmm. We can use that momentum to our advantage to help him get up in there. And it's not a bad approach. You know, it really helps with their confidence being in there and hearing it and stomping around. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it says a lot about him, so yeah. he's just hearing. Yep. Well, he, he started to hear it bang around a little bit and felt everything moving. That made him nervous, but he's he settled into it real quick. He didn't want to come out of there. Right, I'm going to ask him to step off. <laughs> he really hasn't found his feet yet. Right. I'm going to go around here and I'm going to just gonna move, do a little bit more work. We're gonna really focus on on those three main yields, being the being the um, forward hind quarter, four quarter. Because really, when he sits on those hocks, it's it really again, it takes a lot of strength to do that well. Let me get myself untangled here. There we go. He's looking nice and forward. I really like this trot. He's chewing while he's moving. I like that. So something else we can do while we're out here is start to introduce him a little bit to the canter. So I haven't, something else I haven't worked on yet or really necessarily focused on is teaching him how to canter yet. But he's nice and forward here. He's feeling good. We could take advantage of it. So what I'm gonna do is take a hold of the, good boy, take a hold of that snap underneath his chin. Take a hold of the rein. And in time with his inside front, I'm going to make contact with his nose and lift his front leg up in the air and forward. Just like I would if I were supporting him sitting on his back. So I'm going to swing it and lift, 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 lift the front, lift the front, lift the front, lift the front, push, lift the front, lift. Good. Okay. He's cantering like a cow there, but geez, it's the first time I've ever asked him to do it. <clears throat> Maybe you should call it crossfire. I'm gonna get get in trouble. I'm gonna get in trouble from the YouTube people. It's called a crossfire, not a cow canner. <laughs> Try it on this side. Make contact and lift, 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 lift and push, lift, lift. Same thing, a little crossfire there, that's okay. Lift, lift, lift. Lift and push, lift, 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 lift and push, lift. Break them back down to a trot. When they're first learning how to do this, I don't want to be too critical and mostly I want to focus more on mo emotional collection being the goal. You've heard me say that many times, but emotional collection is the goal, not the canter, not whatever task that you're working on. You get settled in emotionally. Emotional collection, we'll call it. Emotional collection. Right there, I'm going to help him out with my understanding pressure, my hurting pressure to say, I didn't ask you to stop. Please don't make assumptions. 
let's have this be a conversation. Contact, lift, 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 understanding pressure. Lift, 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 lift and push. Good. <clears throat> you guys notice I used some that, that energy test that we taught early on. That energy test. Good. probably see what I'm doing see if he notices oh, that darn trailer again much better that time he was happy to walk right on the emotions are high again going in there but it'll take some time and some practice before I teach teach things like this, I really like to have that um, at least a foundation of a language. Because when he first got here, there was, no, there was no back and forth at all. And everybody who's been following his progress from the start, you can, you're able to see that. <clears throat> Oh, when, when we had, so her question, if you guys couldn't hear it was at what point did I figure out that he was, or did I figure he was ready for this? And really all I need is some, some back and forth communication. He's got to be tame and we have to be able to communicate back and forth. We have to have a language. Once you have that language, most tasks tend to be fairly simple. You know, that's the simple part. Even if they are afraid about getting on, at least there's some back and forth and some understanding between the two of you. Because he didn't have to get on today. He just happens to be awesome and he climbed on today. I was going to ask him to climb out, but he's still processing there. So I'm going to readjust on my timing and back off. He's chewing and trying to yawn. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to park this here anymore. He's just going to be trying to get onto the trailer. When we start backing him off, we're going to work on we'll work on doing just a couple steps at a time, one step at a time. It's really important to not cause bad habits. If they commit to coming off, you never close your hand. Because if you, you guys already know this, you're nodding like you know. You can create some bad habits. If they commit to coming off and you try to stop it, they'll smash their heads up into the top of the ceiling or into the frame. If they're committed to come off, allow them to come off and try it again. Now I'm banking on which again, does not, it's not 100%, but really counting on our communication and our language, that understanding we've already built to be able to just take one step at a time. So again, another really important reason to have your, your language working in the form of what I call the five yields, forward, back, quarter, front, quarter, back, quarter, and drift. Forward, backwards, front, quarter, hind, quarter, drift.
I think the tricky part with the teaching the language, Macy, is it's too easy just to do these things as tasks. And if you do them as a task, it not, doesn't, the horse doesn't necessarily understand. So it really has to be developed into something that you both understand. You know, to come out here and just go, oh, well, we got the forward. You know, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yep. Don't just check the boxes. Really, really get your horse understanding what these things mean. All right. Looks like he's about done. Let's approach this one more time, see what he thinks about it. That's what he thinks about it. Okay, we're gonna call that a day. So I'm gonna have Krista walk him around, or you can walk him around if you want, because you haven't seen him in a while. And, and um, allow him to cool out. We'll spray him off, because he's gotten, he's pretty sweaty. And make sure you get some fly spray and we'll call that a day. You guys have any questions? Before I shut the camera off? No. Yes, but you'll wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, appreciate you checking in. If this stuff is helpful, subscribe, follow the page. It really helps me out. And, um, yeah, I'll see you next time.